throw a business card in that cup, boom, fold it, put the address, ship it out. Good morning, my friends. It's 5.20 a.m. on a Monday, so I'm just getting my pot of coffee ready and breakfast, and I will see you guys when I'm done reading. It is 7.05. We are officially in the office, and uh, just like every other morning, we're going to get our to-do list together. Number one thing on the list is to cold call because you always got to do it, and you have to stay consistent. Number two is look up houses for buyers. Number three is to post uh, an, a visual episode of the Chicago Business Podcast. Number four, and this is something I've been procrastinating on, which is follow up. Yes, I got to go through all my hot leads, all my warm leads, give everybody a call, everybody a text message and get that settled in. So that follow up is the most important thing I could do today. Number five is going to be edit. And number six is going to be prepare for a listing appointment. We have one tomorrow with another agent. They reached out to me yesterday. They, they're, they're kind of not out of the business, but they're more focusing on the investing side. So they asked me to help them out with this listing. So I got no problems with this. So that's going to be at 630. And as usual, I like to start with the things I can get done first. And then I can also work in the hardest stuff earlier in the morning. So the first thing I can do right now is look up houses for buyers. Then we will cold call and then the follow up. As usual, I left a couple things off the to-do list. Number seven was supposed to be calling the lender, which I have just put in there. I don't know if you could see, call the lender. This is gonna be for the same deal I called on last week. Uh, I'm just gonna check in for an update. We're supposed to be closing Friday, but I don't know about that. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. And then I have to call another agent to ask some questions about a house I showed over the weekend. And then throughout, while this is all happening, uh, I did lose a deal over, I lost two deals over the weekend and I put one under contract. So I put two offers in for buyers. One, we had to go 1800 over ask and we still lost out. The other one we went in at 12,000 below ask is where we locked it down. So that was, that was perfect for that deal. And then I had one of my luxury rentals that I told you I made a mistake about last week. The one with the lease, rental insurance, all that good stuff. And uh, even though I resolved the rental uh, insurance issue, I thought everything was going to be fine. The landlords now don't want to move out and they want to terminate the lease. So most likely they're either going to give my clients a settlement or uh, sue or uh, let them move in. So we'll see. But that's two grand out of my pocket. And uh, to be honest with you, it really frustrated me because it was like I, I had put in a lot of time for this one. And, I, uh, and it was bothering me that I wasn't going to get paid. But... I got I got over it real quick, and that's when physical exercise comes in handy. I'd had Muay Thai on Sunday, which was yesterday, and boom, gone. Because I don't feel stress, I feel frustration. If there's a, I, I, there is a distinct difference in my eyes, and I was feeling very frustrated over the weekend, especially when I lost the other multiple offers. But as soon as I got in Muay Thai, did a little bit of uh, work, you know, got the sweat pumping or whatever, uh, I felt amazing, and I'm up this morning ready to go make some more money. All right, time to scratch off number two off the list. So I've been tossing and turning about the Chicago Business Podcast. I don't know if I want to post it on the channel or if I just want to do it on the platform, uh, like the podcasting apps, whatever, like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, whatever those are. Uh, because my concern is I don't feel like you guys are going to like them as much and they're more of a longer format, right? They're like 30 minutes each video, sometimes a little bit more. So the solution I've come up with in my head, and I hope this works, let me know if, what you guys think is basically I'm going to take about five to 10 minutes of the best part of the uh, of the entire interview and I'm going to post it on, on YouTube. If you like it enough, then obviously go check out the actual podcast version where it's audio only. And today we are calling expireds because my sales guy is sick. His throat is killing him and I'm not going to work him to death because that's just not right. <laughs> so I'm going to make uh, make these calls and I'm going to record it. It is 8.55 a.m. In about five minutes, we start dialing. I'm going to get the computer queued up. Uh, this way, everything is happening at the same time. and We're super efficient because the truth of the matter is the hardest thing we have to do today is the follow ups. The one thing I'm really terrible at. Uh, and it's the one thing that takes a lot of time because these you got to hand out. Before we start dialing today, I want to show you my last week's numbers uh, is so you can see kind of the whole picture of how many people I contacted and kind of how it went and how long I called for. This way, if you're not getting the results you want, you can kind of measure it to this and be like, okay, I'm not doing enough or Jesus, I'm doing way too much, <laughs> right? Which is not a thing, but let's take a look. 
So this is basically Monday through Friday. I called every single day. And as you can see, on most days, I was able to hit 20 contacts. Friday, I went a little crazy. <laughs> With 30, I wanted to make up for that 16. But nonetheless, the goal was to hit 100 this week. And we hit 109, so I'm very happy with that. All of this only took me nine and a half hours. So that's not that difficult to do, guys. You can do it. Let's go. All right, my friends. After some routine procrastinating, it is finally time to get my ass to work. Okay, folks. It's time for the hardest moment in the day. Clicking that dial button. Three, two, one. Oh, we're live now. It's too late to go back. If you're enjoying the video so far, please take just one minute as I'm prospecting. A like, comment, and subscribe. I love the engagement. The more you guys comment, the more I get to know you, and obviously the more people get to watch the video, so it's greatly, greatly appreciated. Hello? Hi there, uh, is this Thomas? Hello, sir, good morning. Uh, my name is Aaron with Remax First. I know you've probably received a couple of phone calls from agents already, so I'll be brief. I'm calling about the home in Palatine. I saw it expired. I'm just wondering if uh, you're still interested in selling it at some point in the future. Uh-oh, <laughs> what happened? Gotcha, okay, so nothing's gone wrong. You should, uh, and I assume you'll be relisting it probably today or tomorrow. Okay, gotcha. Well, hey, I appreciate you answering the phone, my friend, and uh, good luck with the sale, okay? No problem, Tom, bye-bye. All right, that was unfortunate. It was just a, like a more of a technical error. So while the dollar is rolling, let's talk about exactly what is considered a contact in my book. A contact is somebody who I first confirm the person I'm speaking with, and then I let them know I'm a real estate agent. That's a contact for me. As soon as I say Aaron would remax first, if they hang up, keep talking, not interested, whatever the case is, that is a contact because I let them know if they were interested, the conversation would have uh, you know gone a little bit longer. Sometimes I'm able to take these wrong numbers and make them the contacts by saying, hey, it's Aaron with Remax first, you know, I have the wrong number, but hey, are you at all planning on selling? And then they'll, hello? Hello there, is this Mr. Abraham? Good morning, sir. My name is Aaron with Remax first. I'm sure you received a few phone calls from agents so far, so I'll be super brief. Calling about the house on Aspen. Uh, so I'd expired off the market over the weekend and I'm wondering if you're still interested in selling it at some point in the future. Oh, you have already relisted it? Okay, gotcha. Well, thanks for taking out uh, picking up the call and uh, sounds like you were asleep, so have a good day, my friend. But opportunities. So far, we've, we've had created three opportunities that didn't work out. So we just gotta create more and eventually, Hello? Hello there, is this uh, Mrs. Mencia? Okay, I'm sorry, I have the wrong number then. So that about wraps up the expires. We got an opportunity to speak to four people. Nobody was interested, and we're gonna keep this gravy train rolling into circle prospecting, which a lot of you, uh, a lot of the new, I, I keep forgetting, a lot of the new subscribers here are new. <laughs> so you may have not been watching the older videos where I explain what I do. So I, I follow the Ricky Carruth method where we just find something that's recently sold under contract, just listed, whatever, they find a reason to call a neighborhood, right? And my reasons, and my favorite reason so far has been under contract. So I find something that's been under contract in a neighborhood, in the city I want to uh, work in, in the neighborhoods I want to sell in, and I find it and I call around that house. So I pick the house, I draw a circle around it, and then I call, hence circle prospecting. And it's just a blank call there's nothing to it there is just you interested yes or no we keep it moving that's it all right so i just took a wrong number that called me uh and converted it to a future buyer because he's renting got his name obviously phone number and then i got his email right here so it's gonna be added to the database and then we go from there so even if you have the wrong number there's opportunities in people and that's what the cold calling is for you're not selling anything you're just trying to create as many opportunities as possible for you to make some cheddar. Now, we gotta start pro circle prospecting right now because I'm procrastinating as I usually do because I don't wanna call people at 9.36 in the morning. It's a little bit too early, but if I can get it done now, I'll be done by 11, 11.30 and I'll have the rest of my day to do my follow-up. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for right now. It's 10.47 a.m. and we are done with all the phone calls I dialed. 138 households, 250 phone numbers, and I spoke to 16 people. 
and an hour and 11 minutes of actual dialing. Folks, it's turning out to be a good day. I just spoke to the lender on that deal and it's looking like God willing, we're gonna be able to close on time as originally scheduled. Uh, the biggest issue we were having with the deal has been resolved. So pretty much at this point, it's just paperwork and making sure people get things done on time, which is not the, uh, the hardest thing to do. So let's go to the to-do list and get some things uh, scratched off. Oh, hello prospecting the hardest thing hardest part of the day let's get you out of here calling the lender can be removed off this list so i did add a couple more things as i remember them i like to add them I gotta call i'm gonna call this agent right now then i'm gonna call this agent right after and then uh, we're gonna do this towards the end of this is not a really a priority uh but we're gonna get these two taken care of right away and then we can go straight into follow-ups so it's almost 11 30 i got a lot more things that out of my to-do list so we called the lender i've already talk, spoken about that we called two agents had some conversations about putting some other deals together. So fingers crossed on that. So now it's about 11.30ish. So I wanna take a lunch cause I'm starving, but I also wanna keep working. So I'm gonna do the, the podcast episode and the editing of the podcast episode and other videos right now that I am eating my lunch at the same time. It is 1.37 PM. We got most of the things off the to-do list. Sorry, I spilled some orange on it, but whatever. Uh, all we have to do right now is post the podcast video, which I've just finished editing and then follow up and say hello to Brandon. I'm uh, showing support to my, you know, to my colleagues who are out here prospecting, so kudos to him. And if you're not prospecting, then what are you doing? It's 2.37 uh, p.m. I don't know why I keep saying p.m., but it's 2.37 p.m. Did it, <laughs> it's 2.37 and I'm basically done with the podcast video. It's on YouTube, go check it out. I mean, you're watching it here, so if you get a chance, uh, go listen to the podcast and then you can just subscribe. There's no way to avoid this. We have to do the follow-ups now. So let's get to it. And I can't film that because I need my phone to make the phone call. So I will see you guys probably around 3.34 when I'm done with them. All right, team. So we're doing the follow-ups. And as I'm going through my list, calling my people, I realized that I need to send a handwritten note to somebody who I spoke to, I believe on Friday, and they've expressed interest to sell but not exactly when and it was a short conversation. So I'm just gonna send a follow-up handwritten note and hopefully this catches their eye and they call me when they're ready to move. And all I do with the notes is I write, you know, pleasure speaking with you. If you need anything, you know, feel free to reach out. That's the short version. I throw a business card in that cup, boom, fold it, put the address, ship it out. So one way I figured out to make the follow-up process a lot easier for me is to, when I, when I speak to somebody, is to automatically schedule the call back. Um, the reason I do this is because if I get it through an email, it's only two, three people I have to call. It's a lot easier to do than having to go through a list of 65 people and follow up with them all uh, at the same time. Now, the reason I'm doing it now is because I didn't start the system and uh, since until like maybe three months ago, four months ago. So before that, all the phone calls I made, <laughs> I didn't schedule any callbacks. I just threw them in the uh, one folder. So we got to clean it out and then uh, have the system take over where my life is a lot easier. Sometimes I'll be going through my folder and be like, why is this guy in here? I, this is not even interested in selling. Literally, clearly says, loves his house and has no intentions of ever selling. I put the word ever in there. So we're gonna not even call this guy. This is a waste of time. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, okay. I'm the worst follow upper in the world, right? And I'm sitting here and I'm staring at Charles's phone number, right? And I'm looking at my notes and it says, you know, a couple years down the line, he's gonna wanna sell. I spoke to him in September. And I dialed it on my phone. I was about to, I was about to not call this gentleman, but you know what? He's not interested. I'll try again in a year. Then I said, you know what? Last a uh, few weeks ago, I did that and I lost out on a deal. I'm not doing that again. I just called him and he's like, yeah, can you please call me in a week? We'll be ready to rock and roll. Are you kidding me? How incredible is that? So when you're doing the follow-ups guys, remember if you're like uh, hesitant about calling because you're calling too much, don't be right. The worst thing that can happen is that either they don't pick up or uh, they tell you it's not the right time. So always, always, if your gut's telling you to call, you call. So the only thing left to do on the to-do list that's important is prepare a CMA, which the other agents right here. All right, my friends, it is 6.35 p.m. We are done with everything we have to do on our uh, listing stuff. This isn't really a listing appointment as much as it is just like we're going to go and do a quick CMA, figure out what the house is worth and then see if it's worth selling. That's the situation. We're done. I'm clocking out, uh, clocking out. Nine out of the 10 things on my to-do list are over with. The only thing left were Google reviews. We will take care of that another day. And uh, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.